Hello everybody, welcome back. Today is February, February 25th, and we're doing nonsense and security today. In the oh. opposite order. Yes. February. So much nonsense. And our first security story, I am never shocked. I should stop being shocked, but I, and yet I'm never shocked to find out new facts about Roblox. Half of the children in the United States are Roblox users. It's hot. How it's can hot that game. be true? I went to the Roblox site and I had to look at the four parents tab because I didn't understand it. And I was like, ooh, is this what it feels like to get old? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that. Uh, well, and when you have something that's that popular, obviously it brings in an undesirable crowd. How Roblox quote unquote beamers get rich stealing from children underneath the gaming platform worth 68 billion. Whew. I guess this is just the Minecraft for a new generation. Yeah, it turns Are we going to have to do a Roblox well, competition in years to come? It's not quite that because Roblox is sort of a decentralized base product. All of the content is user generated off of that. Mm. So it's a different business model. But, and also, I, Minecraft hasn't done like in game items and microtransactions and stuff, has it? I don't think so. The only thing I can think of is for Minecon. They give you a cape on your character that you can enable. Can you sell it? I don't think so. I think so, you have to go to Minecon to get one of those capes. So that's the big difference with Roblox, is that they do have all of that, which of course is why people hijack the accounts and then sell off mm -hmm. all the rare stuff. They also mentioned, it sounds like Roblox was kind of like on the NFT train before other people. They will serialize some of the items. So this kid that was attacked, he had like number 900. Yeah. Oh, number, wow. number 918 of whatever this is. And apparently that's worth 320,000 whatever. <laughs> Funny monies. And so really hated to lose that. And that's also how he proved this was happening because he went to a third party website where they still have, you know, they can, you can trade this after they found the exact same number. Hmm. Ooh. So it's all fishing. If your kids play Roblox, it's time to sit them down and have a conversation about fishing. <laughs> People can steal your stuff. Also, you should play your Roblox in a virtual machine sandbox apart from everything else so that people can't steal your stuff as easily. That was, does, that was a callback to the last episode. Does Roblox run on Linux? Uh, it runs under... We played it, and I was playing it under Linux that time that we played it. We never played it. Did we play we Roblox? Did. We definitely did. I have no memory of that. I don't think we did. We did just, well, I did a stream of Roblox like a million years ago, and we were not into it at all. You're thinking, you're thinking of Trove. Mm -hmm. No, no. There have been so many games we've tried you know, over the years. They you get, know how to answer this question? Zero Straws. Yeah, yeah. Zero Straws can probably tell us. Yeah. One of the OG Twitch streamers. Because we tried Roblox, and it was like, this isn't great. Maybe you weren't there, but it was like, this wasn't great. Maybe. So, uh... I have a tendency to put depressing articles because I my thought is like it's better for people to hear about this if it's horrible, and I'm alone in that a lot of times. Here. <laughs> and I mean, the, it's fine if it's something that you can do something about, but sometimes it's just like this is just depressing. Yeah, well, so there's been but and and you know like we just had one of those instances, but I would say, and you're not going to hear about that story, although it's going to be in the one tab, so if you have to know, <laughs> but I would say this is worse. I would yeah, say yeah. this is darker. This well, this is, is this is also tangentially tech related. I'd say too, but horrific. Yeah. yeah, the SFPD, that's the San Francisco Police Department, puts victims' DNA into database used to file claims, rape victims, and a whole bunch of other stuff. The headline says rape victims, but it's actually victims of a lot of different crimes. So, if you go in, you might be dinged to say, "Oh, we have your DNA from a robbery, or we have your DNA from something else." This is the opposite situation that the uh, the article called out where somebody uh, went in to report this kind of a, an assault and their DNA was in a database and then later it was added to the database and then later there was a crime committed and the DNA popped up and they were able to round her up. And it's like, what? How, why were you in the database? And it turns out she was the victim of a crime. Now, I don't know if this is true in this situation, but I do know, and Krista, you probably know more about this than I do, that traditionally... In every major city in America, there's a massive backlog of rape kit DNA testing. Yeah, yeah. I bet that the time it takes to go from rape kit 
into the DNA database is almost nothing. Meanwhile, the time it takes from taking the kit to testing the kit can be months and months and months. Yeah, sometimes yeah. years in some places. So it seems like maybe there's uh, emphasis being put in the wrong place there. Mm. Right. It's not about actually solving the crime. It's about just collecting more data. Yeah, expand the database at all costs. Well, here's a follow-up, and not shocking, but the numbers just keep going up with this scandal. More Polish opposition figures found to have been targeted by the Pegasus spyware. Sure hope people inside Apple are paying attention so that they can build the tools so people can self-audit. We don't have to rely on Apple to say, oops. Because <laughs> how pervasive does it have to be that only just now we're noticing the issue? I guarantee you there's something even more insidious than Pegasus that no one has noticed yet because we don't have the tools to audit. That You know what? Google should be doing with their new virtual technology. Every time you open a link from email or text message, it should run in a virtual machine. Yeah. And if you build it right, how cool is it to do the security auditing from that? It's like, if the virtualized link opener thingy is all of a sudden asking for like file system permissions to decode a zip file, it's like, how did we do that? How is How do we know? And you can snapshot that virtual machine and explore how it's broken and how it's requesting things that don't make any sense for the context of what it's doing. Yeah, now that I think about it, that would be terrible for Google. <laughs> <laughs> now here's a, a crazy story about a piece of technology that most of us probably didn't even know existed. Because why would we ever need to use this? If you're not like a doctor or a journalist, you probably don't need this. This is awful all the way down. If you are one of those people, then this is amazing for you. How much time does this save you? Hours and hours and hours every week, maybe hundreds of hours. But what do you really know about what's on the other side of that app? My journey down the rabbit hole of every journalist's favorite app. Otter.ai has saved reporters countless hours of transcribing interviews, but uh, caveat emptor. So, this, they were, there were interviews that had to do with Uyghurs, and it was like, wait a minute, what? It's not actually transcribing things correctly. Well, mm -hmm. not just that, but obviously when she was doing Uyghur-style stuff, she was very careful not to post anything any damning or you know re relate to an individual person. But she did record things, and then she got those transcriptions auto automatically done through this thing. And then crazy thing happened she got contacted by somebody mm. and was like, oh, what is this? So this little thing popped up. Hey, Felim, I guess is her name. Hey, this was titled Mustafa Aksu. And are you sure? Is this, is this real? Was this you? She immediately contacted him. She was like, am I getting fished? Is this real? Because I've never seen this before. And she got two different answers. One person told her, yeah, it's real. Go ahead and click on it. Another person said, oh, God, no, don't touch that. <laughs> huh. so somebody is monitoring what's going on on otter day ai and when they hear keywords they react mm. we don't know if it's internal or not at this point uh i like that there was a reddit post that popped up this week that uh i don't know if it's real or not it's probably real but uh somebody had been venoing money you know, it's like you pay for lunch, whatever. Oh, uh, you're saying terrorists, right? Yeah, yeah. The 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 friends were uh, Venmoing money back and forth, and it was like ISIS le lessons, and it's like personal jihad for whatever. And they got a, a letter in the mail from their bank that was like, "Please don't put stuff like that in the memo. It's probably just you guys having fun with your friends, but we are obliged to investigate literally anything that comes up like that." Would you write back and say, "Please stop spying on my bank <laughs> yeah, transactions"? Yeah. It's just it's just so normalized that it's like, you know, you can't, you need to come up with code words to refer to this. How dumb of a, it's just. Well, what you're describing is kind of the opposite of a honey pot, right? Yeah. What would we call that? When a we vinegar pot. <laughs> <laughs> but honey pots are big things to use in security when you want to try to catch somebody doing something that you think is wrong. Now, this company, a lot of people are saying are maybe going a little too far with their honeypots. A network of fake test answer sites is trying to incriminate students. So basically, these test questions, I guess that the people that design the tests search for the questions on a search engine, and then they build pages that rank very highly on search results for those particular questions. 
And the idea is that they run the web server, they can compare the IP address of the test taker to the IP address of the person visiting the website or performing the search. So as a student, you don't know what the questions are ahead of time. If you search for the question on a search engine and it pops up on their web server or their IP address or their thing for their application and there's a match, then you know who's cheating. The software is already looking at your eyes and monitoring your attention span and all the other horrible things that these kinds of software do. But beyond that, they're using these honeypots. To, even if you somehow beat all of those systems, they'll compare, like you say, the timestamps and the IP addresses, and they'll burn you for that too. If somebody else in your apartment building that you're yeah. sharing some kind of IP address with just happened to go to that site at the same time, you're done. It's don't, unlikely. Don't read the questions out loud. Don't have anybody behind you. Do not pass go. Do not click $200. Why can't students learn anymore? Yeah. I'm being surveilled all the time. This one has turned out to be a little bit of a non-story, but I, they're trying to argue a different thing here. To me, what this points out is that just basically face recognition is everywhere. Already, days. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. New Yorkers in, in high stop and frisk areas are subject to more facial recognition technology. This is Amnesty International is basically saying, hey, the people that are doing stop and frisk also have really advanced face recognition stuff that's just going off constantly. Another way to say that is there's more facial recognition in high crime areas. Yeah. Which makes sense, but is that okay? But it's also wildly inaccurate a lot of the time. The, the solution for that should not be, let's try to improve the accuracy, but to try to it's like understand it. Technology's flawed. Now, some of you might hear this headline and you might say, I don't understand why that's bad. It seems fine to me. They don't want to get spammed. The other half of you are rushing to register domains. <laughs> I've always wanted to take over that package. Thousands of NPM accounts use email addresses with expired domains. What do you want to do if you want to take over that project? Well, you can use the forgot password and reset your password back to the domain you just bought. And ta-da, you're the proud owner of a new NPM package. Don't do that. <laughs> Somebody probably already has. Scammers? There's scammers deploying malware right now, even as we say this. And if you're sitting there thinking, well, what email address did I use on my NPM packages? Go find out. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Now, Krista, last week you took us down the rabbit hole of the deviant art uh, theft. Yeah, situation. people just stealing art to make NFTs. And we talked about, like, how do you defeat that? Because there's going to be so, it's going to be like the court system. It's going to just be a big log jam as people right. continue to steal. Turns out that maybe there's not a good solution for it. Uh, Sent NFT marketplace suspends activity due to plagiarism issues. <laughs> when all of the content is stolen, I guess we just shut down. <laughs> I guess so. Man, it is kind of nice as someone, you know, you get copyright claimed on YouTube all the time. It's nice to be on the, like, the other side of that for <laughs> once. <laughs> That's not the way you should look at this. No, so. but... But we've literally had silence in our videos claimed where it's like this silence is silence, too similar yeah. to the uh, silence in the other video. And it's just like... But if you're someone who made the artwork, you should be the one who gets but to decide what to do with it. What you just described there is I've been the victim for so long, I can't wait to be, make somebody else the victim. Yeah. <laughs> You've just described all race relations in our country right now. And that's not the way that should be solved. Another thing that is not good is how quickly people got into larceny and evil with their air tags. <laughs> Apple plans air tag updates to curb unwanted tracking. Mm, uh, how did no one foresee this? Oh, I they mean, did. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they definitely I you, did. I bet you there's some Tim Cook emails percolating somewhere. <laughs> there was someone someone on that team was like, couldn't they just track literally anything? And they're like, shut up, dude. We're going to make so much money with this. So they're trying to make it more obvious when there's an air tag around you that's not one of yours. Uh, they're changing the cooldown time, making it louder, trying to fix the whole disable thing because people were selling them on eBay with all that turned off. I don't know. In some ways, wouldn't you think this, to Apple, this is kind of like uh, when people get banned from online play and then run out and buy another account? Yeah. yeah. Oh, people do that in Overwatch all the time. I do not understand it. I mean, you're going to sell a lot of air tags if people are just mailing them off to track something. And another story out of India that maybe points to uh, some corruption. 
<laughs> a hacker group has been framing people for crimes they didn't commit. In India. Activists in India. Yes. This was... <laughs> this happens a lot, as it turns out. <laughs> One of the cases they pointed out is some guy was very critical of Modi and the Modi government. And they found a PDF on his computer. It was like, I'm going to kill Modi. <laughs> and that's all it said. That was his whole manifesto. <laughs> turns out he didn't create that document. Mm. It was placed on his computer. Maybe it's, they've been doing a lot of that. Certainly. There's a couple cases of that happening in the U.S. as well. Yeah. Hunter Biden's laptop? <laughs> Is that think, what happened there? I think the CIA did some stuff too. I don't know. <laughs> If you're gonna, here's a pro tip. If you're going to upgrade Windows 11, <laughs> your, operating si- yeah, your operating system already has that built in. Yeah, You don't need to uh, download anything. It'll just do it from right there. And if you do download something, this could happen. Fake Windows 11 upgrade installers infect you with redline malware. This is also happening for uh, MSI Afterburner. Like if you Googled MSI Afterburner, some, somebody was paying for ads for Afterburner that had malware. This is a pretty common thing. It's like there's a popular thing. Let's get an ad for it, and then it's malware. Google doesn't check. So these guys got a hold of windows-upgraded.com. Looks professional, huh? I mean, it does look like a Microsoft site. Yeah. Well, that download button will get you Windows 11 installation assist- assistant.zip. Pro tip, you don't want that. <laughs> you want to stay far away from that. From a design perspective, I'm kind of impressed. Yeah? Yeah, that that's, looks pretty solid. It's clean? Yeah. Well, I mean, the nav bar looks very similar to the actual mark. I wonder if they just copy and pasted the, the okay. HTML and grabbed the yeah. CSS. And I'm sure they stole some CSS there. Yeah. For sure. Now, <clears throat> the big story that we've been covering about Amazon and a lot of online marketplaces, counterfeits. Of course, Wendell's got his crusade about the... Uh, the cables, yeah. The <laughs> video cables. <laughs> And I've got some Amazon Basic USB cables that are causing me so many nightmares with my microphone right now. It's a terrible, terrible problem. But on the grand scale of things, you know, bad tech and counterfeit cables, they pale in comparison to this. U.S. nuclear power plants contain dangerous counterfeit parts, the report finds. So, yeah, they are. And you might be thinking, oh, these are special parts for... No, they're not. The things like grade eight bolts. Do you know how very bad it is when you replace a bolt with a grade eight bolt that's not actually a grade eight bolt? It's like a grade two or three bolt. It's gonna be a very bad time for everybody because it's not just the bolt that you're gonna have to replace again. Something is going to destroy itself catastrophically. We've been in a situation for a couple of years now where the supply chain has failed. There aren't people making things the way that they need to be. There are huge vacuums so the cost of a grade eight bolt has gone from like pennies to dollars. And people are selling things as grade eight bolts that are not grade eight bolts. So they point out a couple of different things here. They had a pipe, just a pipe. It was for wastewater. They installed it, they turned on the pressure, it exploded just into a million pieces. It was nowhere even close <laughs> to the actual materials that they were crying. <laughs> that wasn't even remotely schedule 80. So. They kind of downplay the risk of that at the end of the article. They're like, well, this probably isn't that big a deal. I don't Aren't know. Aren't we doing a bunch of infrastructure spending right now? We need to make sure we're sourcing good parts. Like, Didn't we have a bridge that fell down? Yeah. Yeah, I've got, I've, there's, it's funny. I was doing some boiler maintenance and one of the local hardware stores, I needed a two inch, you know, schedule 80 deal. And uh, the local place, one of the local places I had it made in China and I started tightening it onto the fitting and you got to get it really tight. And it exploded. It like, you know, it threads on and then you just, you tighten it, but you really got to use the strength of Samson and it just split on the seam. And then I went to an, a different plumbing supply place and they had some from Thailand that had a UL stamp under Roger's lab on it. That one worked great. I feel like you have to become an expert in everything anymore to make sure that you're getting something quality. I can't get, you know, it's like, is uh. this schedule 80? Yeah, it totally is. No, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't at all. Like, I don't even shop on Amazon a lot because I know it's going to be a lot of counterfeit stuff. And it's like, I'd rather just spend a week researching this and then order it directly from whoever the supplier is. But I bet the store didn't know that. Probably not. Yeah, probably not. Yeah. They probably ordered Schedule 80 and what they got was Swill. You pay for this and they give you that. (laughs) That's a Neil Young lady. So, uh, Mage Cart 
And you're thinking, well, what year is this? <laughs> Mage cart. Didn't we already get rid of that? Isn't that done? Now nah, it's back. Hundreds of e-commerce sites are booby trapped with payment card skimming malware. I don't. I think DigiKey got caught up in this because one of my cards was stolen through DigiKey. It's nothing fancy, although they have figured out a way to pop up and sort of like keep you in the cart process, but not really. Yeah. You're working on a different URL at that point. And I never saw any follow-up to this, did you? Nope. No explanation. And yeah. considering what else is happening there, you really got to wonder, what was this about? Canada's major banks go offline in a mysterious hours-long outage. It's probably not because of the Emergency Powers Act, or maybe it is because of the Emergency Powers Act, but three major banks were completely offline for everything online, and even the ATMs were problematic. Or, hell, maybe it's Russian hackers. Maybe it's <laughs> Chinese hackers pretending to be Russian hackers. Maybe it's just 4chan trying to cause problems. Like, who could well, it be? What if it's Canadian hackers pretending to be Chinese hackers pretending to be yeah, Russian hackers? Yeah, who knows? It turns out it was actually people in Russia that were sending money, and but they're terrorists. That's, there's That's just, not actually... <laughs> You're adding that as flavor. That didn't actually happen. So TD, which is apparently a big bank in Canada, uh, they said, no, we weren't affected by that. And yet, when mm. Bleeping Computer looked into it, both the online app, what is going on with this battery, and uh, the ATM. <laughs> It's, you're not affected, huh? Your ATM disagrees with you. <laughs> <laughs> We've always been at war with East Asia. <laughs> and it, it's important to note that the emergency act that Trudeau enacted gave all of these banks the ability to do a lot more spying. Mm. Could there have been a push that didn't quite work? Yeah. I'm just going to feel very sad when the Autowalks guy posts a video that's like, they, they took all my money. <laughs> <laughs> he is not explicitly pro-protest. but it doesn't matter. That's true. Right. Yeah, isn't his whole thing just taking walks. There's a lot of channels like that yes. are just walking around a different city. His whole thing is very deliberately just taking walks and that absolutely will be criminalized. And you know what's funny? The reason he's only had that channel for a year and a half and the reason he created it is because he couldn't do anything else during the lockdowns. So yeah. You know. that's. I mean, I, I used to walk around my little neighborhood for a long time. I didn't Sh video it. Should have taken a camera with you. Yeah. I'm just. Well, every week... I try my best to do a like Krista trigger story. This is one a for story me. that I know that she's going to feel very strongly about and have done other research on. And this one, I, I'm totally confident this week. A study finds Western mega drought is the worst in 1,200 years. There was a there was a little bit of hope, like a glimmer of hope, because this is an El Nino year for our climate, so that means it's usually a little cooler and wetter for the winter. And so we had really high snowpack in like the Sierras in the West for a while. And then, oh, no more rain after that short period, and now we're back to uh, mega drought status. Uh, we know this is the worst in, uh, what was it, 1,500 years? I don't know. It was the, wor or the worst in an ungodly amount of years because of tree analysis. Yeah. We did uh, 1,200 years. We did a, a crazy amount of tree analysis <coughs> and determined that the last time it was even remotely close to this bad was the year 1500 but we're actually much worse now than the year 1500 you have to go back another <laughs> thousand years but we've ballooned our population for yeah. that area and we're continually pumping water out of the colorado river and it's like what we have to stop this but no one seems to care or notice yeah what we have to stop is that population right yeah they they, they can't keep having people moving into these places that don't have water to support them we can't keep having people <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Elon Musk's desalination plant can just start pumping the ocean into Colorado. Because we've got too much ocean in the ocean and not enough ocean in Colorado. Are we going to drown the people in Colorado? Because <laughs> that's the only way I think that works. Like Colorado's not the problem. They have water in Colorado. They're just pumping it all out to other places. Yeah, oh, just, yeah. Not just Colorado. We're just choosing them arbitrarily. It's Maybe places it's like Arizona. Arizona has huge population growth, but no water to support it. <laughs> Maybe we could build a... You know, we built the, the Panama Canal... Maybe we can build some sort of artificial canal from the ocean to Arizona. That's, that's what they, <laughs> they did. That, they built a pipeline from the Colorado to California. That and that's how we prop up our agricultural industry. Yeah, and that water's salty. Mm. Well, yeah, we can, in the case of that. We can probably fix that, too. Not unless we get that fusion reactor. <laughs> Once you do that, then you have unintended consequences from the power that runs the desalinization plant. One of the really cool desalination technologies doesn't actually desalinate the salted part of the water it just separates the salt water from the water because 
The ocean is salt water and regular water mixed together. And you can actually not desalinate it, just separate water and salt water. And that was one of the desalination technologies that's, that's quote unquote low power. Then why aren't we doing that? We're trying. Some some kid was like, hey, let's figure this out. There's a membrane that does it. So we should be doing There's that. There's not a fire under anyone, anyone's ass yet. They think we can just keep growing infinitely and not have any problems. Yeah, but the engagement challenge is to maybe tell me why that's not a thing. But I'm pretty sure that's a thing. I would say that the reason it's not a thing is because every time, every time <laughs> we have something good and decent and pure, it gets purchased and destroyed. <laughs> not unlike Wordle, which has also banned the word slave. As New York Times stops users from entering offensive words. Oh, your, your guess is slave? I don't think so. You're not allowed to enter that. Not in the word list. That's not the only word, but we don't really know what the banned word list is yet. We just know that... Uh, well, I can't say these other ones, but here we go. I, they should really be banning words with double letters. <laughs> <laughs> but they won't do that because they're cowards. <laughs> Doesn't that artificially lower the difficulty? Uh, sort of, but like for, it doesn't always show you, like, if, there, if you get one letter right, if that letter is repeated, it doesn't necessarily highlight the letter to indicate that you got it right. Twice, if that makes sense. I think that's just the way it should work. I don't like it. Maybe you could fork Wordle and do your own version. Everybody else has. Yeah. There's a lot of different versions of Wordle. You don't have to use the New York Times one. Well, back when we first started to see uh, the O variant, obviously I can't say it, but you know what I'm talking about, the, the popular one now that everybody got. Everybody collected it. Uh, Gotta catch them all. When we first heard about it in this country... We heard about it in a very hilarious way. And of course we covered it here because, you know. It was an anime convention. There were furries there. And when there are furries there, you gotta talk about it. But the CDC, who are beyond reproach. <laughs> like, I don't think, can you think of a time when the CDC has ever said anything that turned out to be not true? Uh, it's just, uh, I really feel like there's something, but something's just blocking nah, my memory. I think you're wrong. I don't think that's ever happened. But they are here <laughs> to confidently tell us that that was nothing to have been concerned about. <laughs> the New York City Anime Convention was not a super spreader event, as it turns out. <laughs> For the thing, but probably spread some other things around. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you think that, uh, you know, your furry costume is as effective as a mask? I mean, maybe that's what it was. Mm, uh, you know, it could be. <laughs> Love probably your own cosplay? I, you know what I'm willing to say? That I bet a furry mask is just as effective as a cloth mask. <laughs> <laughs> maybe more so, more layers. So they did actually track several of these people. They weren't able to track them all, but they tracked 4,000 of them and followed up. And sure enough, turns out not very many people got sick. And the ones that did, didn't get very sick because I guess furries are robust. They got good Probably skews systems. younger. Younger crowd into the anime so. and furry stuff. You've got to be in pretty good shape to wear 50 pounds of fur and leather. and <laughs> Leather and chain mail. True. Plus, I bet furries drink a lot of milk. High vitamin D, right? Mm. Yeah. Well, here's an adorable story. And I don't usually think babies are adorable, but I kind of like this one just because, <laughs> I mean, how could you not? Georgia toddler diagnosed with extremely rare, uncombable hair syndrome. I looked at this story. That's and the headline. When I first looked at it, I, I didn't believe it until I, I read the whole thing. Because I was like, listen, as a girl who grew up with curly hair, people tried to brush my hair a lot when I was a kid. If you have curly hair, you do not brush it because it looks like this kid's hair. It will just get real big and poofy. But he actually does have some sort of weird genetic trait that changes the shape of his hair, like under a microscope. And it makes it stick up like that. So they described that he was normal until about six months. And then this just exploded. It's so cute. Then they say, like, they go to the supermarket and stuff and people want to touch his hair. And also I've, annoying as someone with curly hair, but I get it. Uh, maybe not as adorable as they've created a Instagram account to take advantage of this. <laughs> yeah. If you want to check them out. Oh, Lord. Now, they say that right now, almost every social situation this kid is in, the hair is actually great for him. Yeah. Because it attracts attention. Other kids love it. I wonder at what age does he begin to hate that hair? Probably as soon as he gets into public school. Mm. You know where... Or if there's any sort of trend, like, in the in the early 2000s, like, the really long straight hair was in, and I couldn't do that. It was very frustrating for me. What if he can find a place in the world kind of like Korea is right now? 
just dye that, you fit right in. Everybody be like, oh, that's the hottest hairstyle I've ever seen. That's oh, amazing. you thinking like the boy band thing? Yeah, maybe yeah. he's got a career in a boy well, band. Well, it's not just boy bands. That's that's really hot in all of Korea, isn't it? Mm. What Crazy the? colored hair for men. Oh, maybe. Sure, some of our audience can tell us about that. Now, Krista, another thing that you've told us in the past is that you have uh, some people in your social circle who you suspect are cheating at I know Wordle. he's cheating. He stopped doing it. But apparently <laughs> if you look at if you look at the source code of Wordle, you can see what the word is. Hmm. And he was always posting like the first guess he got was always But the you right can also, one. I mean, you can find out 10 minutes after it's happened, it's been posted. Right? Yeah, you can go on it's Twitter. It's the same word for everybody. Yeah. Is, is there a clue? Do you get a clue or is it just give it a give it something? No, you, your first you guess to, is blind. And there are there are whole strategies about what's your first word pick in Wordle. So, <laughs> I always do reads. That's a that's a great question, Wendell. So we can actually illustrate that before we do the headline. After you f- win at Wordle, it'll give you this blank output here to tweet so that people can see how you got there without spoiling it. Uh, so this gentleman did that, but there was a problem. Carl Anthony Towns called out after obvious fake Wordle post. So it turns out the second row, three rows is a really strong win. Yeah, that is a strong win. The second row. You get like six chances, I think. Somebody looked at the, the word and looked at the possible words that he could have chosen from the non band word list. This was an impossible guess. Mm. Not real. Cheater. Interesting. Who do you think is worse? Someone who cheats at Overwatch or someone who cheats at Wordle? I think, in terms of who's more pathetic, it's probably the person who cheats at Wordle because. But they're not as disruptive. They're not as disruptive. And, but. I'm Wordle's just like a social game. Like, why? Why cheat at it? In before Tim Sweeney, it's not worth bringing Wordle to Linux. That's, <laughs> that's like not competitive at all. Like, why would you care? The joy is the experience of telling your friends, hey, did you do the Wordle today? Yeah, well, the joy of video games is accomplishing something, right? Getting the endorphins from overcoming a difficulty. And when you have an aimbot, you don't get that. But yeah. people still like it. I, I don't understand that, though. That makes no sense to me. I want a video game where there's a robot that can drywall a room. I want a video game where you control the robot that's drywalling a room somewhere. So what you want basically is 2040, a 20-year-old person, the video game? (laughs) Because that's what it's going to (laughs) be. Something like that. I mean, it'd probably be fun. And then, you know, the the, the robot company's getting some training data. (laughs) It will be the opposite of fun. It's like House Flipper. Because if you look away from your drywalling, a buzzer will go off because the eye sensor <laughs> is looking at you. It's like, you're time stealing. I mean, this is the future that MetaMates are going to bring us. <laughs> MetaMates. Ugh. Ugh. It's like, this is the most amazing VR house flipper I've ever seen. And it's just, you know. Someone crying in their headset. <laughs> <laughs> well, what you're describing, what we're all describing, is a grossly dystopian future. And... That is a popular kind of fiction, isn't it? Yeah. In fact, one of the hottest TV shows of the past couple of years was The Squid Game, which was overwhelmingly dystopian and awful. But it turns out people want to be a part of that. I don't understand it. <laughs> Saudi Arabia, the first in the world to offer the full experience of Squid Game. Okay. Not quite the full experience. They won't kill you. You guys haven't watched that yet, right? No. Wow, you're missing out. I'm vaguely familiar, but... It's so good. So they point out that they have done the, the minimum that they can do to make these games non-lethal. So like there's one game in the Squid Game, spoiler alert, you have to walk along a glass, like checkerboard type situation. Some of the glass is tempered and some of it's not. Mm. And you have to jump. So if you make the wrong choice, you go down. In this version, it's just a loud buzz and a red light. Mm. But you're still out. You still can't play anymore. This uh, The guy who made Muck, the game we played for a long time, he made a version of it called Crab Game. And it has all the same games in it. Mm, okay. But you can't play on IRL, Krista, which is no. so much more But exciting. Crab Game's free, so and I don't have to go to Saudi you know, Arabia. Did you guys, They didn't say how much this cost. Said you could participate, but they didn't say what that cost. I wonder if this will become popular. So, you know, they have the escape rooms. Mm. You could probably get this format in escape room format. You need a big building, though. Yeah. Well, I mean, the escape rooms are pretty big, so. Well, the queen is, uh, there was that that un- unpleasant headline about her son. 
settling that case and basically admitting yeah. a, a terrible thing. Also, uh, a lot of people are saying she had to pay that bill because he's broke. Mm. That's a tough conversation to have, right? Hey, mom, or mom, as they say. Mummy. Mom, I'm going to need $12 million. Oh, what for, Andrew? <laughs> <laughs> I've so, already stripped you of all your titles. <laughs> so and maybe, now you come asking for cash? Maybe the royal coffers are getting a little low. They're going to need to refill them. How are they going to do it? The queen is launching a royal ketchup. The queen's brown sauce is packed with vinegar and spices. Shouldn't it be Worcestershire? Worcestershire? Similar to Worcestershire sauce. So, yeah, it's apparently going to be like a really nice ketchup. But here's the kicker. You buy it directly from her. We don't know what the shipping costs, but the ketchup itself, $9. Directly from her? Like, do you go to Buckingham Palace and like you meet her out in the courtyard and it's kind of yeah. shady. You pull your cash out of your it's pocket. Right. She only takes cash. Yeah. <laughs> she knows what's about to happen with the economy. <laughs> don't tell anybody where you got this ketchup. There's going to be a run on the banks. Turns out... Uh, and this is a little crazy, right? Because this is our thing. Not very patriotic of her, but one of her favorite foods, hamburger. Mm. Oh. I guess technically that was invented in Europe, right? <laughs> Shouldn't she like like shepherd's pie or something? British yeah, food. Fish and chips. Yeah. Uh. Movie pass. Remember movie pass? Boy, that was a bad idea. <laughs> and it played out exactly like a lot of people predicted it would. And which makes you wonder... How do they think this is going to play out? Ugh. The new MoviePass app will use your eyes to track you and force you to watch ads. Ah, uh, the scene from A Clockwork Orange. Always <sighs> used. It's like, you must watch this. It's like, no! So, yeah, I don't quite understand it, but I get the impression, obviously you don't want somebody on their phone in the theater, right? So I get the impression you have to watch the ads before, and you get incremental Ugh. payments. <laughs> Those... You get, collect those. When you get enough of them, you can exchange that for the movie. Drink verification can. Oh, it's going to be more insidious than that. If this is even remotely successful, the next thing is your phone is going to say, what's the number one soft drink brand? Uh, what's the Doritos number Doritos do it right. <laughs> and it's going to do that in the theater. Yeah. Uh, How much do you love Doritos? You have to stand up and tell everybody. I did just, that makes me like murderous with rage <laughs> hearing stories about how like they just you, they can't just advertise to you they they demand your attention now i'm trying to think of a way how could i use my cats right oh so <laughs> make your cats so they're watch looking the ads. at it all right maybe put like a laser on the wall behind the phone uh, uh, what about the click farms you know all the click farms are they just going to be like mannequins with eyes painted on them in front of the phones and there's just a farm of those. They're, they're going to have a, a helmet that's kind of like a, a soccer ball or a golf ball, you know, with like a and each one's going to have a face on it so that everyone's pointing at a different screen. <laughs> and then there's mirrors in there so you can switch between the faces. Excellent. Get started on that, somebody. The Gold Cube was a hot story. People were excited about it, but it was only there for one day and clearly... A lot of marketing companies saw that and they said, ooh, Ugh. we need to be a part of this. Actually, we don't need to do something like this. We need to just hijack this. 11.7 million gold cube gets replaced with a big Velveeta box. Because of course. I never realized that Velveeta was labeled as liquid gold. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think they got in trouble for calling it cheese. Yeah, isn't it? It's, <laughs> it's poverty cheese, right? Like it's we used definitely to get, not cheese. We didn't even get Velveeta. We got the off-brand Velveeta when I was a kid. It's a pasteurized cheese product. <laughs> it melts really good in mac and cheese. It melts really good in noodles. Wait a minute. What's pasteurized? What does that say? Cream cheese? I can't cheese? read it. No. I can't tell what that is. We're all too blind. Open up another tab. It's not a click. Hang on. We'll look it up. Uh, can't just open the image. Oh, I don't think this is going to help us a whole lot. Recipe? Yeah, yeah, recipe cheese product. Pasteurized recipe cheese product. That doesn't mean anything. Well, maybe it means like, because most people use it in noodles. Like, that's how my mom would put She'd put Velveeta in noodles. That's a crazy phrase. That's got to be something to get some law loophole or something, right? Uh, yeah, probably. It's, it's not actually food, most likely. <laughs> and that's another example of in the European Union, that wouldn't fly because... 
<laughs> You're just trying to exploit a loophole. It's not cheese. Don't mislead people when I'm thinking it's some sort of cheese. Uh, well, misleading people is the uh, also the topic here. But is anybody stupid enough? No. To confuse these two things. This is dumb. Seems unlikely. A plant shop owner is fighting Nike over the name. Just suck it. Suck is in succulent. S U C C. How the kids use it. Yeah. So this young lady uh, lost her job due to the issues of the past couple of years. And she said to herself, you know what? I need to reinvent myself. What do I love? And she'd been trying to help her yard be less water dependent. So she was working with succulents. She said, you know what? I've got a great idea. She got drunk on a little tequila, came up with the name Just Suck It, which is hilarious. (laughs) And boom, she's successful. She's doing really well. Until Nike shows up. Nike's like, that's too confusing and too similar to just do it. Oh, come they, on. They should withdraw their case. I mean, come on. She's never going to be as successful as Nike. And, and they're, they're in totally different spaces. Like. And Nike's trademark is not polluted in the least by that. Nike was planning on moving into the plant world, and now they're upset. It'd be funny if she got a ton of phone calls. It's like, do you have shoes? <laughs> Hi, do you sell athletic wear? I'm looking for a cactus and something in a runner. This is a hilarious uh, headline because I suppose if you're going to do this, you should take it this seriously, right? <laughs> but here's Is this Catholic only? Yeah. yeah. Well, here's my question. They've invalidated all these. What about the people who died in the meantime? Uh, the Pope will have to fix this. We learned from the movie Dogma that uh, the Pope can say some stuff and then fix it after the fact. Are they in purgatory waiting? I mean... I don't know if perpetual existence is fourth dimensionally re- related to how we are now. It may be that, you know, this was always predestined to be so that it will never have been. I don't uh, know. John the Baptist didn't oh. have a script when he baptized Jesus, so I think it's okay. <laughs> You're going for maybe a that's Calvinist? Filthy, maybe that's filthy Protestant in me talking, but... Well, whether or not any of that is real, what we do know for sure is that these were completely invalid. <laughs> Phoenix priest who botched baptisms for decades apologizes and seeks to make amends. He said, I instead of we. He said we, we instead of we, I. Because we instead of I. when you are baptizing as a Catholic priest, you are not yourself. You are channeling Jesus directly. Maybe he thought he was translating, translating, channeling the, uh, the Holy Trinity. And that's kind of a we. Is that an I, we, me? That's going to send you straight to hell. <laughs> what are you even talking about? You cannot do that. I don't understand the dogma with the, the Catholic side, so I have no insight here. It's, it's the Holy Trinity. That's the way. No, I don't know. That doesn't count. Seems like it wasn't malicious. He's apologized. But but, uh, but with the whole like Kevin Smith movie, we learned that you know with the, the the buddy Jesus subplot that you know if the Catholic if the priest if the Pope decrees something and it's contradictory to the thing it creates the loophole that opens up something or other so the pope can probably just fix this now some people would argue executive order kind of thing i don't know some people would argue that they kind of make it up as they go along but in their defense i don't think kevin smith movies are (laughs) canon in the catholic church a that's, raging debate. That's what now. that's what makes it so it's like they're so pedantic with it that that's why it's funny well, you know what's not funny? Police corruption. And oh boy, do we have a lot of that going on. And uh, the problem with it is after the police do corrupt things, it takes a long time to wind out. And in most cases, nothing happens to them. Why? Because of politics. Texas police unions would like for Travis County District Attorney to stop announcing <laughs> indictments of Texas police officers until after the election. Hmm. You can still indict them for whatever wrongdoing they may have done. Just wait until after the elections. If you're these cops, aren't you thinking, well, wait a minute. <laughs> that sounds like it's going to be bad for me eventually. So it comes from, obviously, all of the uh, the uprising we had here in this country and the cops. Maybe heavy-handed response to that. Hmm. This, this article, I feel like, is peak dystopia where when and where is the last time you saw a functioning vending machine uh at the grocery store outside my old apartment mm-hmm. was that a small grocery store yeah it was local the rest stopped between here and wilderness 
Oh, right. They have actually some nice vending machines. There. Yeah. They have some interesting products in those. The the one near my old apartment, it had a it had a Fago machine. Ooh. Just Fago. I kind of miss when they were always outside the grocery stores. Because it was always cheaper than anything you could buy in toilet. Which yeah. is probably why they're not outside the grocery stores. Yeah. Anyway. But vending machines are going extinct. However, some vending machines, just by their very existence and their tenacity, become celebrities. The force is strong with this vending machine. Pittsburghers make the pilgrimage to see the 90s relic on Mount Washington. It's a, it's a phantom minute. Like, why is this? People are apparently nostalgic for the 90s. I suppose. I, I just don't. Is this a Disney plant? Is this article planted by Disney? Probably. It wasn't Disney in those days. Episode one. No, but maybe they're getting ready to release it from the vault. Why would anybody want that one released? This tweet's also from 2020. It's still there after two years. I like that one year uh, pranksters at MIT uh, had a vending machine that was motorized and so when no one was around it had a bunch of sensors and stuff on it and when no one was around it would relocate itself <laughs> did anyone see that you know this is... that, it was eventually discovered because it was malfunctioning uh, but it would just move itself and, part, and, and to it, new could, places. It, could, it could find electrical outlets and plug itself back in part of its prime directive was that it should, no one should ever witness that yeah, yeah. yeah. if they do they have to be killed <laughs> well it didn't kill them but that was part of its programming it was like only people, do this people die under vending machines every year and it's <laughs> oh, just yeah. this one it's trying to rock them yeah they, 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 they could have solved that by now yeah? yeah is that on purpose how dare you try to manhandle <laughs> this that's machine that's what you get <laughs> well uh in the past couple of years, we've really ramped up a lot of the dogma around calling people things that is way over the top for what they're really doing. It's being used to the point that it's kind of lost all meaning. The words have lost their meaning. And we certainly saw a hell of an example of that in Canadian Parliament recently. <laughs> but this story shows you that it's not partisan. It is not. Both sides will try and launch this smart bomb. Now, here's my recommendation to you. If you're going to try to use this fire and forget horrible weapon of mass destruction, maybe read a book about it first <laughs> and learn the terminology. Uh, the Gazpacho police. Uh, yes, yes. I, pretty sure We're pretty sure she meant Gestapo. Demonetized. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, gazpacho, that's a, that's a soup. That's a Spanish cold tomato Maybe soup. Maybe that's what she meant. Which sounds awful. Yeah. Cold tomato soup? Mm, I don't like cold tomato soup. I don't like tomato soup Maybe Maybe we're missing out. Chat, tell us. Could be like good. House Flipper, right? Yeah, might be delicious. Now, I see, every time I see her in headlines, like the Guardian didn't do it, which is prop to the Guardian. They always shorten her, they acronym her name the same way they do AOC. They call her MTG. Every time I read that, I'm like, Magic the Gathering? <laughs> <laughs> Why were they talking about this? Also, I mean, you know, she can't help this, but I can't. Doesn't she look a little bit like Dog the Bounty Hunter? <laughs> <laughs> she has that energy. I can see it. Uh, don't think about too much about that or blood will shoot out of your nose. <clears throat> yeah, it's disappointing. Instead, think about this adorable image. Yeah. <laughs> Police handcuffed cougar bothering a residential neighborhood. They didn't euthanize it. They were able to relocate it. Where is this? <laughs> is this in Colorado? I ain't going to tell you nothing, pig. <laughs> <laughs> I have rights. So, yeah, they found this guy in a, a, a residential neighborhood oh, with no. a lot of people. And uh, they tranked him. But these guys were just the cops. I guess the cops in this neighborhood are rolling around with tank darts and they were waiting on the animal control people, but they were like, what if he wakes up? Cause we don't have another tank dart. Oh yeah. So the answer, pop the cuffs on him. Do you think his little paws flare out enough to actually stop him from getting those off? Probably not. Uh, cougars are pretty big. This is also, I was wrong. It's British Columbia. Oh, uh, I bet they found out he was going to Ottawa. <laughs> Uh, the Kentucky Fish and Wildlife Department says there are no cougars left in Kentucky. However, local game camps say differently. There are at least a few. Yeah, I've yeah. been to a couple of local bars that I would also <laughs> dispute that. <laughs> Hashtag justice for the cougar. This is the sad story. We're, we're, we're canceling this one. If you're so curious that you have to know the darkness, it's the second it, to last. In it, one it wasn't really funny. It was just sad. Very There's sad. Nothing funny about it. But I think it's important for people to know, but you know what? What's what's going to be really sad is those kids 
are they're going to be googled and yeah the the case transcripts will be on the internet eventually and so they're going to be getting a job and somebody's going to be looking oh i think she settled yeah yeah but i mean you know it's still going to be out there yeah, she sold him out, and she was like, oh, he's just, well, you know, let's not talk about it, because they don't know what they're talking about. Mm. And here we go. This is, uh, like, maximum dystopia. Yeah, yeah. I hate this. Everything overlords. Everything we've talked about in terms of, what is what is going on with those glasses? <laughs> that was distracting. <laughs> everything we've talked about with company store and, you know, like, a, the way that our corporate overlords want to own everything and have us just exist completely in their world could not be they never did that remember the google city in canada Mm -hmm. they didn't do that right no something went wrong with that yeah like they figured out that was a bad idea yeah but i don't think there's anything to stop this no No. disney this is gonna happen disney launches new neighborhood community story living this is like an hoa on steroids (laughs) (laughs) who wants this it is disney the neighborhood it's catering to people who are like weirdly obsessed with disney i think it's going to be an hoa without the o yeah yeah that's the worst part. Looks yeah. beautiful though. Look at that. That's it's just, just a, a model. Yeah, an artist <laughs> rendition. Here you go. Got some weird, not actual palm trees kind of things going back there. Because they don't have enough water Come. to actually. Build it. <laughs> <laughs> well, they do have this gorgeous, this giant, yeah, pool. Turquoise, turquoise. Yeah, turquoise. How are they going to get the water right? They're going to use that same. They're going to helicopter ice in from the poles. You know that yeah. special. Uh, it's not chlorine. They use something else at Disney. Oh, oh it starts yeah. with the B. It's going to be in here. Yeah. It stinks. So, yeah, uh, we don't know too much about it. Now, I did go to the website, and it just gets more terrifying. Yeah, Twitter <laughs> roasted this when it came out, but there were some people who were interested in it. <laughs> Story living by Disney. So, we've only got one community right now, Rancho Mirage. And... uh Okay, so like, look at how like they're trying to make this really cool. This is California. What's it gonna look like in the Florida one? <laughs> it's gonna be, it's gonna be a weird mix of like the Disney aesthetic, but also the kind of weird trash of Florida and meth. Yeah, I'm sure they're gonna have meth. And, uh, <laughs> it's like, what happened to Billy? It was like, oh, Billy's family had to move. They became too poor. <laughs> oh. Yeah, they were removed by the Disney Corporation. I imagine that selling your house. In this situation, will also Disney will have almost total control of that, don't you think? Yeah, the yeah. retirement communities have already perfected this, where you don't own your house. Like you, you, you can kind of buy it, but it's the retirement community has a built-in right of first refusal, and there's rules governing how the house is priced. So when you buy the house back, the retirement community gets to buy it under market value. Mm. Do you think that Disney would let any of the Canadian truckers move into their community? <laughs> yeah, that's. Uh, are they going to do background checks? Oh, on yeah. Are you thing? kidding? Yeah. This is yeah HOA on steroids. Yeah, there's. We're going to be doing stories in the future where the the person quoted in the story is going to say it's like I didn't. I never intended for to go on the Disney blacklist. I'm never going to be allowed to <laughs> be in the Disney community. I didn't mean. I that. can't get a Disney Plus account. Disney will not call it a blacklist. <laughs> <laughs> They'll call it like. The non-magical list. <laughs> I'm on the Song of the South list. <laughs> the villain list. Uh, uh, unrelated to anything, I like that font they're using in the headline. I like how they've they've sort of flipped the O's around and made the the bottom and the top heavier. That's they, nice. They probably own the 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 glyphs for that and will aggressively pursue anybody. Yeah, I'm sure it's like a probably a custom typeface, but. It looks cool. Aggressive copyright enforcement. Here's an yeah, look, copyright Disney. All rights reserved right at the top of their about page. Plans are subject to change or cancellation in part or whole at any time without notice. That's what I want to hear about my home. Yeah, your housing. <laughs> but buy in now. Good news. We've decided to convert the neighborhood into a theme park. It's like, great, how much are you giving for my house? Get out. Yeah. <laughs> Be thankful that I'm not just killing you outright. Oh, this is interesting. Disney is not the developer of Cartino, a story living by Disney community, or the builder or seller of the homes. Third-party developing and building companies independently owned and operated. Well, of course, because of the legal liability. So they just put their name on it and then probably have Disney characters walking around your neighborhood at all hours? Well, Disney doesn't want to get sued. Oh, wow, it just gets worse. 
Disney does not guarantee obligations of nor provide any warranties for the construction of community infrastructure, recreation areas, or unaffiliated parties. So Disney could pull out at any moment. Yep. What if your pool gets filled with sewage? Are they just going to be like, well, that sucks for you. It's not magical anymore, I guess. <laughs> I was promised a neighborhood experience for Star Wars. They were going to build a <laughs> Star Wars experience in the neighborhood. I've signed up for Star Wars neighborhood. At the last minute, they changed it to Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> this is there, there's so many layers of dystopia to this that our reality is so terrible that you would subject yourself to this just to try to get away from it yeah like also equal housing opportunity how much low-income housing is there <laughs> going to be in cotino literally none <laughs> oh it's going to be like the disney parks where the associates have to take special underground oh yeah <laughs> that's a, in park architect they do that that people don't like to see your workers so you have to build underground they're tunnels gonna, they're gonna say oh we've got houses for every price point but most of them are underground <laughs> the the groundskeeper for your house is not allowed to use the sidewalks he has to pop out of your yard in a tube <laughs> and he's got to split his time between your house and maintenance on the disney owned properties yeah <laughs> but you pay his entire salary yeah mm. I can't wait to hear more about this. <laughs> uh, do you think they'll go forward with it? People oh. were kind of pissy about it online. I think so, yeah. I yeah. think there's enough. See, because you don't have to make everybody happy here. You have to make a very small group the of The Disney happy. adults. If, if yeah. Disney can bring about the future that you will own nothing, they will bring it about. And everyone else will just jump on board. Man, that's sad. Yeah. But imagine how magical your birthdays are going to be there, your kids. The, 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 there, there may be enough inertial momentum from the people that already own everything to make it impossible to own anything in the future. Well, the good news about that is that there's a tipping point way before we get there that's the French Revolution. <laughs> See, everyone keeps talking about that, how like wealth inequality is worse than it was before the revolution, and it's not happening. So yeah. I don't know. Yeah, because... People can tolerate a lot. Because people keep trying to do it in a peaceful way. Yeah. And you see what that gets you. I'm not advocating for anything. I don't want any part of it. But I'll tell you what, parking your trucks ain't going to cut it anymore. <laughs> it is amazing how good technology is laying bare the truth of those situations. And yet, that truth is not permeating amongst the population. No. People are crying out for censorship and control. <laughs> because it's for me and not for, or for thee and not for me. Well, listen, one day it'll come to Catino <laughs> and you'll regret it. They're going to run out of water before that happens. Well, let's just give them Disney water. <laughs> They're already out of water, and the reserves are almost gone, too. They're, They're like, let's build this in the desert in California. Look, think how cool it'll look on the gram. They're going to give you the Disney bottle water, and it tastes just a little bit like that disinfectant they use in the... Bromine. <laughs> yeah, it's bromine. bromine. I couldn't think of it. Do you have a genetic anomaly that makes you allergic to bromine? Too bad. Don't live here. No magic for you. <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys next week. See ya. Bye. Bye.